So in a previous video, I discussed creating a geometry cache uh, to lighten the render load, uh, to lighten the load during animation when you have multiple characters or assets in a scene file. Now, another form of caching is called alembic caching, which actually comes in very handy for creating things like um, CrowdSim uh, and also to lighten the load on your system. With Alembic caching, pretty much it just plays back the cache and you can create multiple copies of it. You can apply shaders to it. Um, you can even keyframe the cached animation itself. So you can basically change the timing, uh, change the location, create multiple copies. So you can do a lot of things with it to really enhance a scene. So here we have Buster, character I modeled and rigged a little while ago. I basically ripped out the rig and just apply just a joint structure to this one so that I could actually apply mocap data. So I use mocap data so I can easily test a rig's deformation before I actually start setting up controls and things like that because uh, I like to paint the weights early. So it's actually a nice way to just have a little fun with the character as well. So let's say I put a dance on Buster. And this is free mocap data, so it's a little off. I could go in and clean up the mocap data by editing the keyframes on the, the uh, source. And it'll automatically update on Buster. So if I rotate it the arm, you can see it actually updates there. But let's say I wanted to create a crowd of characters basically performing this same dance. Okay, so if I want to do an entire crowd of him, I could basically import this character or reference it into a scene over and over and over, or composite it all together, things like that. But doing that is very CPU intensive, and it can be somewhat um, complicated. But what I can do here is I can actually create an Alembic cache. And an Alembic cache, basically I select the geometry, and the first thing you need to remember when it comes to creating an Olympic cache that the Olympic cache only works on geometry that's been actually been bound to the joint structure. So it can't be parented, it can't be constrained, it needs to be actually bound, uh, smooth bound to the geometry, to the uh, joint structure. So if I create it, let's say, a sphere. And we'll say that it's going to be a ball or something like that. And let's say I took this and I parented it to his arm. So I'll, I'll actually connect it to the outside of the right arm just by selecting it, shift selecting the joint structure, and I'll just parent it there. So when I play it back, you can see that it follows, it's stuck to his arm, it just follows along, no problem, right? Okay, so I'm going to disable joints right now. Okay, so when I play it back, there we go. Still attached, still following, no problem. Okay. Now, if I want to actually create a cache for this, I need to select the geometry. Okay, so I have all the geometry selected, and it's polygon geometry. And to create an Olympic em cache, I need to go to the cache menu. Now, by default, it's usually not available. Uh, to act actually activate the Olympic cache, you need to go into Windows, Settings and Preferences, Plugin Manager. And if you haven't already activated, you need to make sure that you activate the ABC import bundle, okay, within the plugins. So ABC import, make sure you're lo it's loaded and auto loading, so it always loads when you go into Maya. And then when you go to cache, it'll appear as the first item, Alembic cache, okay. And so to create a cache, it's actually rather simple. All you have to do is choose export selection. Or if you want to do an entire scene, you can do export all the scene. Now what it actually exports, it exports the geometry with keyframed animation basically on the components of the geometry. So the geometry actually just animates on its own, more or less. Okay, so when I export it, I'm going to call it busted. And I'm going to export. You can export based on uh, the timeline, based on a uh, limited range. You can change the step size. So you actually have a lot of different options that you actually do to export the character. You could even export it, let's say, uh, before 
the start of the animation, let's say before zero, so that it basically holds a pose for a long time before it starts playing back. So I can just export it, say yes. And so it basically just plays through the entire timeline in this case. And it's, as it's doing that, it's writing out a file that contains the entire thing. Okay, so once you actually have your Olympic cache exported, you can actually bring it back in immediately. You can uh, import it or you can reference it back in. Uh, referencing, I believe, is actually a new feature in uh, Maya 2016. Not sure it's available in previous versions, but you could easily import the reference, import it, or bring it as a reference. I think bringing a reference is probably going to be a little better because you can actually uh, still manipulate a reference in a rather thorough way. So I'm going to go with my reference settings. I'm actually going to put a, put it in a group so it contains any stray parts. And I'll call it uh, a lem group. And we'll say one. A lem group one. Okay, and I'll tell it to merge it, and it will basically it'll bring it in. And if there's any conflict in the objects, then maybe it'll add this uh, little muster as a prefix. So I'm going to reference it in. So within the cache directory of the project folder, that's where it created my Alembic cache folder as well. And so all I have to do is choose to reference that, brings it in, and as long as everything was properly bound, we should see everything sort of overlapping. Uh, but as you can see, that sphere that I parented to his arm is not attached. That's because, as I said, the, the Olympic cache only works for things that are actually bound to the joint structure. So that means a smooth bind. Okay, so if I go to my outliner, and let's see, I'll grab that group that I created, and I'll just nudge the cached character over a bit so we can separate them from the original. Okay, and so if I rewind and press play, now you can see that the animation has been applied. Okay, no problem. Minus the ball because the ball was not bound. Now the great thing about the Olympic cache, and yes, uh, he is uh, does appear to be lower poly. That's because actually Buster is low poly, but I smooth previewed him, which I can do the same for the cache information here. So I'll set that, and I'll set it to smooth only one level. Okay, so when I rewind and play it back, you can see that everything's about the same, minus the shading. And that's the one thing it doesn't export with the, uh, the caching, the shading. But that's fine, because you can actually go in and up reapply shaders. Uh, different shaders, or even existing shaders. It doesn't matter, it depends on how you want to apply things. If you have textures, I mean, whatever, it'll allow you to apply all the same stuff all over again if you wish. Okay, but I'm going to keep these a little different just so things stand out a little bit so you can tell the original from the copy. Okay, so when I rewind and play back, everything is more or less the same. Now, the great thing about the Olympic cache is I can select the geometry, come over to my channels box, and I can go to the cache history. I can go to the outputs for it. Let me see. I can go to the busted Alembic cache node, so I just select one piece of geometry, and I can change the speed. Let's say I put it at 0.5, and I rewind, and notice they're going to start at the same place, but when I play it back, the cached version of Buster is now moving at half speed. Okay, And just as I can slow it down, I can go into the node and I can increase that speed so I can make it move twice as fast. Okay, so rewind, play it back, and now he's moving much faster than the original. Okay? And so he finishes a lot faster too. But besides uh, changing the speed, I can also tell the animation to hold for a bit. So I can play around with uh, the timing. So let's say put in an offset, and I'll say put in an offset of maybe 100 frames or so. So I rewind it, press play, and so as you can see now, 
it holds playback until it reaches frame 100, and then it starts playing back. Okay, so you can actually have a lot of fun with it, just tweaking the uh, tweaking the start time and the speed. I could even set it to something like 0.9, so it plays back slightly slower than the original. And hold on, let me kill the offset. So I'll put the offset to zero. So when it plays back, it'll play back close to the same speed, but there will be a little bit of asynchronicity. So they almost look like two separate dancers. So beyond just the regular playback, you can also set the cache to perform various cycles. So by default it does a hold, which means once it actually passes the end of the cache, it basically just stops. Okay, as you can see, the mocap goes on a little further beyond 260, not much, just a couple of frames, but the cache completely stops after 260 because that was sort of the last frame of the playback. But you can also set it to do things like loop, so that once it does pass 260, it basically just repeats the animation from the beginning. Another option is to set it to reverse, uh, so that from the beginning it actually plays the animation in reverse, so the cache basically plays back that way. Uh, you can also do a bounce, so this way you actually get the animation in its original order, and then once it passes 260 it basically does it in reverse. So you have a lot of uh, little options, little ways to play around with your cache and create some variety within the playback, so if you are doing some sort of a, uh, a crowd sim, it actually makes it a lot a lot easier to create variety and a little more of a realistic feel to it just because of the additional variation. So besides just playing around with the basic settings, you can of course bring in other copies. You can take the existing copy and you can actually do a duplicate special and make instances of it. It's actually a nice way to uh, quickly assemble a little uh, crowd sim. So if I actually bring up duplicate special from edit and I set it for instances, and I tell it to, let's say, offset the position of the duplicate, every duplicate that's being created, let's say, move it one unit along the x-axis, or let's do two units, so we get a good offset. And I'll create five other copies of it, and just apply that. And so when I zoom out, we have copies, and when I rewind and play it back, we have all of our busters performing the same dance. And the great thing about creating the instances is I can create multiple lines of these guys, and they're all going to respond to the same um, Alembic node history. So if I wanted them all to play back a little slower or a little faster, let's say I'll put it at 0.95, so it's slightly offset from the original. So I'll play them back. And so now all of them play back a little slower than the original. And of course, I can always go in and reference in yet another copy. Okay, and once I have the other copy, I can actually use that to create yet another crowd. Okay, and create a nice little crowd sim where we have a little more variation because the guys in the foreground are going a little slower than the guys in the row behind them. And so we can have a lot of fun with this. As you can see, it doesn't really slow down playback any. And of course, since I do have a separate line here, I can go back to these guys and if I tell them to bounce and the foreground to bounce, I can just sort of create a nice continuous loop. And a nice little crowd sim. And I can just keep duplicating these guys. And since it's pretty much reading from two cache files, it's going to be very easy to do so without causing too much of a problem.